So the big picture for this lesson is radioactive decay. Here's a graph of carbon-14. Carbon-14 is used in what's called carbon dating to determine the age of any organic matter. So carbon-14 decays into carbon-12, and it's exponential decay in terms of half-life. So we know the half-life of carbon-14 to carbon-12 is 5,730 years. That means it takes that long for half of an amount of carbon-14 to decay to carbon-12, and then it takes another half-life for it to decay by half again, and so on and so forth. So it's exponential decay because every half-life, the amount of carbon-14 decreases by half. So if you can determine the percentage of carbon-14, you can really accurately determine how old some piece of organic matter is. So the lesson lists common radioactive isotopes, and most of these are useful, as you can see, for us. The one that's really concerning is uranium-235 because that's used for nuclear power, which is very helpful. At the same time, the half-life is 7 times 10 to the 8 years, which is a very, very long time. So that's the problem with using uranium-235 is that the radiation lasts for millions of years. It's a very simple formula for half-life. P is the principal amount or initial amount of the radiation. The one-half is the decay factor. The T is the time elapsed, and the H is the half-life. In other words, the number of years it takes for half of the material to decay. So if you're trying to solve for the amount of time that has passed based on the measurements you have of the initial amount and then the current amount you have, you can see you have to use logarithms. The algebra is pretty straightforward, though. So if there's 10% carbon-14 remaining, the item is about 19,000 years old. So that's the big picture for this lesson.